All right, I talked several times in the book about the importance of organizing your files and naming your files with something that's meaningful and getting them into folders where it's easy for you to then piece things together in a chronological order or some other useful order. So one of the examples that I'll use here comes from downloading newspapers um, or newspaper articles. I've noted the usefulness of newspapers.com and here's an example with I think about 70 files that were downloaded. If you use, by the way, the the, the actual pre-populated names when you go in and you select a section of a page on newspapers.com and you um, save it, it'll put the date and the newspaper right there in the, the pre-populated name so you don't have to type all the details out. So you see examples of here, these are all from one newspaper in Utah, but um, you, you've got the, the newspaper, the actual day of week, and which can be useful and interesting, and then the month, the day, and the year. And uh, in fact, I'm going to show you real quickly how you uh, generate these files. So let's suppose we came into newspapers.com and I want to run a search for one of my ancestors and we'll see if we can find an article about him and something we can put in here so yeah here's actually a funeral announcement so this is always a, a useful one that have a lot of useful information um, so what you want to do is come up here and instead of you can clip as well but I always do print and save and this tends to generate a more useful file for you so click that and then select a portion of the page and uh, you can just come in here and do that and then hit save and you can save as a JPEG or a PDF. The PDF actually puts it in a nice format with some of the details of when you downloaded these um, so you could go with that version but either way that will download it right into your downloads folder on a, a Windows based computer and so then once we're here we come back in and that's how we've generated all these files so what I would do now I've got my, my newspapers folder f newspapers folders and then there I've put them into just decade buckets you could go and put one every year if you chose to and you could always make subfolders within these if you want to do that or add them later but this is a pretty quick way and usually you don't have enough that you have to do them by year so I'll just go through and use my control button and click on all the 1930s we'll start with those since that's first on the list and get every 1930s newspaper article I see on the screen and drag them over. I don't want to do any scrolling right now. That's just going to slow things down. So we'll move those over and then we'll start on the next group. And let's see, we'll go with 1960s. There might just be one. Oops. So we'll take that one over. Then let's say 20s. We've got a 1920, 21. A few of these. Drag those into the 1920s folder on the left. Get some 1940s articles here now. You see it's going pretty fast. We're moving several of them over each time. We'll get, you know, 20 or 30 of them probably per minute moved over. And you could always go and even put in a, a detailed breakdown within one of the decades if you've got. Looks like we've got a lot of 1920s articles here, so that might be a good way to do that. But really, it's up to you. You can customize your f the formats and the, the level of granularity you want in these reports based on what your own uses are. But I do strongly recommend that you put these in some sort of organized fashion because uh, you, you'll find is you'll get so many articles eventually that you can't find things and you will have spent the time to research you went to all that trouble and now it's somewhere lost on your hard drive and unless the name is something that <clears throat> is very descriptive you may not be able to go find it with a search even of your whole hard drive so you know all the better to get these into folders where because when you run a search of your hard drive you'll also find the folder names so Anyway, that's how I've done that. I did 72 uh, files into those folders. Now you can see them broken into decades. And of course, it gives you, if you go to the extra large icons, you can read the headlines here. And so I see what happened in the 1910s, then in the 1920s, then the 30s and 40s and 50s and into the 60s. And uh, I've got this nice little summary. It took just me just a, a few minutes to put all that together. And of course, newspapers.com gave me the the descriptive names already so I know the exact dates of each of these articles so I could always go in and throw a name on them as well right we could go on and put a, put these into a 
details list like this and um, you use the rename function and put a name at the front of it if you want to do it that way but um, anyway lots of options but definitely take advantage of this capability